Hello YouTube and welcome back to Warframe Tips and Tricks Episode 2. Today we're going to talk about using Limbo to effectively farm for the Spy Frame Ivara. Ivara is only available as a reward through completing all three vaults within a Spy Run. Each one requires a different difficulty and the hardest ones to obtain are going to be the Neuroptics and the Blueprints at about a 7% chance apiece. Uh, this run I'm going to demonstrate using Limbo and my recommendation for easily farming for Ivara is going to be sticking to the Corpus maps. For this demonstration I'm going to do one run on Pluto Oceanum and one run on Neptune La Media and hopefully we'll encounter the five variant rooms that you will run through with Limbo. The previous video I did spoke about Limbo's ability to walk through sensors if you have not checked it out, definitely do so when you get a chance. So first off, I'm going to hit up Oceanum, but before I do that, I'm going to open up my arsenal and show you my recommended build. Now you can go with this, or you can go with any version of this, as long as you're running Rush and Armored Agility. That way you have your ex extreme speed boost. I do recommend running Redirection for the increased shield capacity as well as these mods for increased shield regeneration. This is only if you have to stun or delay an enemy and the higher difficulties that enemy is usually going to be a bursa that is so far up your rear you can taste it. Alright, so again uh, you can run rush and armored agility for that extra movement. Now to start out, we'll go to Oceana on Pluto. Now, uh, I do recommend doing this solo if you're wanting to farm, because if you're running with a group, chances are somebody's going to wind up botching the whole deal. So as soon as you start out, now my primary weapon is Lanka, which is a charge weapon. You want to be quick, so I'm switching over to my sidearm and jumping into Limbo. Now, as you can see, I'm kind of zipping along right away. Don't worry about getting hit. The only things you really need to worry about are going to be nullifiers and bursas. Nullifiers will pull you out of the void, so do be careful with them. Alright, we can jump out, take him down. Now from the sounds of it, this is a strictly sensor room. Immediately I will tell you the easiest way to get through these. Your biggest threats are going to be the security cameras because they are optical and they will detect you. So take those out jump into limbo and you'll see you can just walk through all the detection lasers you can also do these runs with limbo but those sensors he can still be detected by now do be careful sometimes you will find an enemy inside the room and that may throw you off Lumbo and rolling out. Nope. Prime example there. He just pulled me out of limbo. And I have no idea what that was. And this is why the shield recharge. Now I've also got a uh, shield recharge from my pet as well, my Helios Prime. Which that there of course is optional, but it's quite useful. Alright, this is another strictly sensor room, so you just jump into limbo and run right through. Sometimes there's a grate in the way right here. Now on the hard difficulty, and I think on the medium, you will encounter a security camera up here, so walk in. And that should not have seen me. But can't really do anything about that now. Now 
Of course, you'll encounter some glitches like that. As you saw, I was behind a wall, should not have been detected, but it happens. Luckily, that's not one of the rooms that's got all the drones in it, so that's a plus. Okay, this one is really easy. You start the elevator, and on the way down you'll see an opening. You just jump right in. And take that out and him. Jump into limbo, and you're going straight up to the top. So that's three of the five. There may be more, I'm not really too sure, but at my count there are five different rooms for the Corpus Tyson and Tile Set. So we're done with Oshinum and we'll go to La Media next. I don't remember if I pulled up the information here. Uh, on the higher difficulty, there is only about a 7.5% chance of getting either the Neuroptics or the Blueprint. And that is currently what run we are in at the moment. Okay, and now we're going to go over to Neptune and La Media. Now this one can be actually kind of annoying to navigate. I do recommend Oshinum because it's pretty straightforward, and you can actually do it somewhat faster than with Oshinum. But for the sake of demonstrating the variety types of rooms that you'll encounter, I'm making sure to cover it all. That way you know where enemies spawn, where the cameras are, and how to easily get through and avoid the sensors. Well, of course, with Limbo, the sensors are not a problem at all. It's just the cameras you really need to worry about. sensor room just like before run right through and straight up in now let's hope I don't get detected by the camera again now watch carefully sometimes there will be a camera over here now you can actually wait for the opening and drop down or you can just jump into limbo and drop down either one works On this build, I'm also running the increased hack time on mods, or I'm sorry, on consoles. I get an additional six seconds to hack the terminals as long as I don't set off the sensors or alarms. Now, another plus about Limbo is they recently changed it to where even while something is cast into Limbo and put into stasis, he can still fire projectiles and deal damage to them. Uh, I kind of agree with that changeover, except it kind of ruins one of the things I did like about him for, such as one of the Riven requirements, was that you could throw something into stasis, fire a couple bullets, and uh, the particular one I'm thinking about, I believe it was uh, X, head, uh, X amount of headshots. Uh, while aim gliding, 
and the one I had encountered, which I liked him for, was that I had to get six consecutive headshots while aim gliding. So the best way to do that was to throw them into limbo, put them in stasis, jump into limbo yourself, and just aim glide and release stasis afterwards. But now that the projectiles take effect while you are putting them in stasis, it kind of ruins that. But as I said, you can worry about the Bursas, you can kill them for fun or whatever. It's also fun to put them into stasis, kill them, drop stasis, hack them, and turn them against their allies. But when you're focused on, on farming specific things, it's just easier to run straight through. Always watch out for the nullifiers so that they don't pull you out of your rift. This is the one that's fairly straightforward. I'm pretty sure I destroyed that thing before he summoned anything. Alright, that's enough of that. Like this, I can hear the camera on the other side of the door. Yep, that's the right one. Now the room with the elevator I don't think spawns in this particular tile set. I have gone completely backwards here. counter. Oh, that's actually one thing to mention. While Limbo is in Limbo, the operator stays in the real world. So, if you ever needed to clear the way without risking injury to yourself, you can operator void dash and then jump back and you see I'm still in Limbo. Just like that. Alright, so again, no components, but seeing as I've already built her, this video is only for demonstration purposes. But for the sake of farming, the long and the short of it is, using Limbo you can avoid pretty much everything except the cameras. So as long as you jump out of Limbo, destroy the cameras before they notice you, you can pretty much get through the whole thing without detection. Well, without alarming anyone. So let's revisit the build again. Uh, we're running Rush and Armored Agility. These are easy mods to come by. Increasing your movement speed to a total of 1.67 from 1.15. back on. Alright, and then we are also running Intruder for an additional six seconds of hacking. And Vigilante Vigor, Fortitude, and Fast Deflection for a total of 230% increased shield recharge rate. As well as a rank 7 redirection for an additional 320 shield capacity. 
That doesn't really do much for Limbo, as you can see, but it makes sure that your recharge is pretty quick. I've got continuity for the duration in case I have to cast something into stasis. So stasis for them lasts 19.5 seconds. Now they actually recently nerfed Cataclysm and stasis so that it doesn't last as long as it used to. In addition to that, I'm also running Helios Prime and the mod I'm running is Guardian for boosting the shields. That pretty much covers the tips and tricks for farming for Ivara. Uh, make sure to stick around, like, comment, subscribe. If you've got any suggestions or anything you would like me to cover, feel free to list in the comments below. Uh, if you haven't checked out my first video, Lua and pa or, I'm sorry, Limbo and Pavlo, be sure to check out that one as well. And keep uh, tabs on my channel. I'll definitely be doing Warframes, uh, weapons, events, and even current running things. My next video I plan, and that might change, is doing a guide on how to effectively take down the terror list. I know plenty of people have done that, but I've recently been experimenting on more effective ways of doing so. So feel free to check back in for updates, and as always, keep on battling, Tenno.